Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one Filipino show in the Midwest. I'm Grady Pasqual. Welcome to our show. Today we have all the top stories from the Philippines. We also have what's happening in our own Filipino-American community of Chicago. We have interesting interviews led by our very own executive producer, Ms. Veronica Layton. We have Bridget Cotero Carino. All these are coming up and more. Afterward from our sponsors, please stay with us. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. on Thursday said there is a need to re-examine the designs for Metro Manila's flood control projects as he noted that these were not as effective in preventing the widespread flooding that happened Wednesday. Even as the volume of rainfall dumped by the typhoon-enhanced southwest monsoon was lower than 2009's typhoon Ondoy, the Philippine leader made a statement as he visited the flooded areas in Kamanava to check on the situation of affected residents. Marcos, along with other cabinet officials, boarded a military truck to visit evacuation centers in Malanday National High School in Valenzuela and Barangay Tanza in Navotas. Marcos says this is a clear manifestation of the effects of climate change. Just a simple assessment. The reason I did this was to really inspect because I wanted to see uh, what, uh, uh, what the situation was. And I was right. It's really different listening, uh, reading the uh, piece of paper than actually seeing it and seeing what people have to go through. So we have to relook, we have to re-examine some of the designs of our flood control. Now here, it, for example, this was not, the, the, the amount of water was not as bad as Undoy. But the effect was greater than Undoy. Mas malaki ang baha. Mas maraming na baha na lugar kesa panahon ng Undoy. Mas marami tayong flood control ngayon kaysa noon. Pero climate change, this is what the, the effects of climate change are. The president also blaming the amount of garbage for the massive flooding, which he says affected the capacity of the pumping stations. Sana matuto naman ang tao, huwag niya ko yung parte yung nagtatapon ng basura. Dahil yung basura yun ang nagbara doon sa mga pump natin. Kaya hindi kasing effective na pwede. Lagi na pumpas yun, 81. 81. 81. Uh, in Venezuela, I think they have 32. So marami na yung pumping station. Pero talaga, you have to put it somewhere. The president also visited the navigational gate in Barangay Tanza in Navotas, which is seen to have aggravated floods in several barangays of Navotas and Malabon after it was damaged by a barge that hit it last month. The president has ordered the DPWH to undertake an engineering assessment of the structure. Now, what, what we have what we have seen is that uh, one of the most important parts uh, that uh, the problema was that navigation uh, uh, gate that we went to. Not nasira because pinangga ng isang barko basta hindi sumunod sa instruction. Sinira niya. That is why the uh, water is still 80% of the water. Uh, Malabot, the same. Uh, Valenzuela also. So we have to really look into that. Uh Prior to his visit, the president led a meeting in Malacanang where he was briefed by cabinet officials of the effects of the typhoon and southwest monsoon. We can see for ourselves that umaalis na yung, yes. uh, yung typhoon uh, system. So where are we now? Yeah. Next slide, please. Where, what, what, yeah. what is the situation on the ground now? Where is there still flooding? Where, is there, where are there still isolated communities? That is what we need to know. Because para gumalaw yung uh, lahat ng ating mga agency, we need to know where to go. That's really what I need to hear from you. Where yes. do we go now? Yes, Which are the places that need the most help immediately? 
The Metro Manila Development Authority says all of their 71 pumping stations were operational at the height of Carina. Speaking to ANC's top story, MMDA Chairman Armando Arte said flood-affected local government units reported that floods immediately receded after several hours. Artes, however, admits they need to put up more pumping stations in critical areas. 71 pumping stations were operational during the height of the storm. It's more than the Ondoy. So uh, it's not that they, our pumps are not working, but right. it's really the volume of water. We really need more pumping stations. Uh, it should be uh, positioned or placed in critical areas. Aside from the National Capital Region, the provinces of Oriental Mindoro, Batangas, Cavite, Bataan and Bulacan have also declared a state of calamity according to the DILG. Data from the NDRRMC shows 21 individuals have died from the effects of Typhoon Karina and the Southwest Monsoon, of which seven are from NCR, three are from Region 3, and 11 from Calabarzon. 15 were reported injured and five remain missing. Meanwhile, almost 48,000 families or over 200,000 individuals are currently in evacuation centers. The Department of Social Welfare and Development says they have so far distributed 300,000 food packs to affected areas. The agency is also calling on volunteers to help repack food supplies. We're calling on uh, the public to join us in repacking family food packs at our National Resource Operations Center at Chapel Road in Pasay City. So for those who are interested, kindly visit our uh, NROC uh, at Pasay and uh, uh, learn more about this uh, uh, worthwhile activity that you could participate in. Too. Some Manila residents displaced by floods have returned to their homes. One of them is Catalina Madrid, whose house was partially damaged. Flooding in some areas have subsided, but at the height of the storm, Madrid was stranded on the second floor of her home. Manila Mayor Honey Lacuna, together with Senator Aimee Marcos, visited the Delpan Evacuation Center Thursday morning and distributed food to their residents. Lacuna said around 4,400 families or 20,000 individuals from different parts of Manila were forced to flee. Ang inaantay lang po natin talaga ngayon yung humupa po, yung uh, tubig baha sa kanilang mga lugar. Kasi ayoko naman pong babalik sila, hindi pa naman po ganun ka ganda yung ating panahon. Pagsigurado na po na ligtas sila, sa lang po namin sila pa uuwi. Meanwhile, Senator Marcos questioned where the money for flood control went. Noting some areas not known for flooding were suddenly inundated. Medyo nakakapikon kasi sa totoo lang hindi naman nagkulang ang Congress at ang Senado sa pagbibigay ng pera para sa flood control. Eh, kung tutuusin, 450 billion, halos 1.4 billion a day ang flood control budget. Kung isusuma total mo lahat ng agencies uh, mula sa DPWH pababa. Asa na punta yung pera? Over in Navotas, Mayor John Reitianco has assured residents they're working on expediting repairs on a damaged navigational gate of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, but stressed it cannot be rushed due to challenging conditions. Subukan po natin na talagang madaliin at dahil nasira yung dalawang arm nun, medyo malaking repair po yan. At dahil nasa ilalim siya ng tubig, underwater yung pag-repair, Matagal din po yan. Nearby Malabon City also experiencing the effects of the damaged floodgate. Kaya nung dumagsa yung malakas na ulan kahapon na non-stop, sobrang grabe talaga may mga lugar sa amin na lagpas tao ang baha. Kaya lang kung may madadaanan pa tayong uh, mataas sa tubig yan po ay dala ng high tide at dahil hindi po maisara yung navgate. In Antipolo City, a major road remains impassable due to huge rocks swept by raging floodwaters from the mountain. The local government vowed to provide help, but residents have grown impatient and decided to remove the rocks themselves. So may available, tatakbuhin po natin yan ng magad. Kasi kung yun nga po, galing po tayo sa masamang panahon, so may mga iba rin pong uh, reported po ng mga soul erosion na kinilangan din po natin mag-deploy ng mga heavy equipment. Hundreds of families are isolated after a lone hanging bridge in the area was damaged. Maraming nagutom sa amin dito dahil wala ho kaming daanan. Tatlong araw po kami walang trabaho. The local government said they will fix the bridge before classes open on Monday. Meanwhile, the MMDA says it is helping local government units clear garbage left by the floods. 
Various agencies are helping with waste disposal, including those from the Manila Bay Dolomite Beach, where more than 1,000 sacks of garbage were collected. This rescue team struggled to save a couple and their two young children in situ matining in Alag Village, Bako Oriental, Mindoro. The family was unable to leave their house because flood waters rose quickly. Pagising namin ng umaga, wala pang tubig yung aming harapan. Eh, lalabas po sana kami. Hindi na po kami nakalabas kasi biglang lumating yung tubig. Tapos nadagan na ng maraming ano ng sagi yung aming mga tulay na tanggal na. Dala na po ng tulay, hindi na po kami nakalabas. 25 villages in Baco were submerged affecting over 10,000 families. The entire town has been placed under a state of calamity. Relief operations have begun, but Mayor Alan Roldan admits their funds are not enough. He appeals for additional assistance. Pinipilit natin ang lahat ng barangay ay magbadalhan natin ng tulong sa tulong ng DSWD at syempre sa mga taong gustong tumulong, bukas po ang bayan ng Baco para sa inyong mga tulong. In Calapan City, 10 villages are still flooded. Evacuation has been ordered for residents living in low-lying areas and those near the river. But many refuse to leave. Ayaw ho nung asawa ko eh, mas maigi pa daw sa bahay kahit baha. Hindi naman ho inaaabot ang aming higaan. Residents are using boats to reach their destinations. In the province of Batangas, a landslide in the town of Agoncillo buried a home in Barangay Subic, Ilaya. The fatalities include a pregnant woman and three children. Vice Governor Mark Levisti says some cities are without power. In Angeles City, Pampanga, two people died also due to a landslide. Mayor Carmelo Lasatin Jr. has ordered forced evacuation of residents living near creeks and rivers. in the Philippines. In times of economic uncertainty and chaos, your money means nothing. You may not even be able to get it from your bank or ATM. And the money you do have in the stock market will go down and down and down. It's happened during every economic cycle, and it will happen again. What you can bank on is gold and silver. Gold and silver have been a reliable and trusted form of currency for thousands of years. Gold and silver have never been worth zero, and typically gold holds its value and sometimes grows during economic turmoil. Call the Gold Hotline now and learn how to protect your money and your assets with gold and silver. And learn how to set up a new IRA or roll over your current one into a gold-backed IRA. Protect your money from the next market crash with gold and silver. Call now for your free gold guide. How would you like to get high-speed internet for your home for less than $2 a day? That's right, for about 50 bucks a month, you'll get lightning fast internet. Are you paying less than 50 bucks a month right now for your internet? Then call Whole Home Connect right now for blazing fast internet at 50 bucks a month with no price increases, no hidden fees, no contracts, no equipment fees. It's a great deal. And guess what? You can try it for 15 days. If you don't like it, you get your money back but you're gonna love it and you're gonna love the price internet for your home for 50 bucks a month that's less than two bucks a day plus no contracts no equipment fees and our 15-day guarantee call now call 800-555-1212 that's 800-555-1212 again 800-555-1212 don't wait call us right now 
Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe $25,000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is a perfect time to get cash out, while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need $25,000, $50,000, or even $100,000, now's the time. Home values are up, and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855 332 3929. That's 855 332 3929. Call 855 332 3929. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, beauty, mysticism, bata corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of this show. Today, I have two very interesting gentlemen who will be talking uh, about their upcoming yeah. golf tournament, um, which is pretty fun. And these guys are, are both doctors in our community. And uh, let me introduce both of them. <clears throat> On the left is Dr. Luis Mangubat. Hello. Hi. And the past president, you're the past president of Philippine Medical Association of Chicago, correct? Yeah. Okay. And uh, the guy on the right is Dr. Rafi Castro. Good he, morning. He's the current president of the USD or University of Santo Tomas Medical Association. Hi, guys. Welcome to our show. Hello. Wow, too early, huh? Uh, you're ready to play golf. Uh, they're both golfers, avid golfers. And uh, they're participating in the upcoming golf tournament that I just mentioned. All right. This golf tournament is for the uh, fundraising of the USC Medical Association, correct? Yes. All right. Okay, will you please... Will you please talk about the, this tournament? Oh, go ahead, Luis. Uh, it used to be a yearly thing where, you know, we raise funds for our university. Uh, originally, we used the fund to support uh, medical staff in the university. And later on, we used uh, the fund to do to help support the charity section of the hospital. And lately we have been helping uh, some medical mission. So right now with Dr. Rafael Castro, I'm sure he has a lot of plans, but during my term, just to cite an example, I, used, I bought uh, a, a small bus for the student to ride from the university to Sapang Palai. So, uh, uh, that helped the students' transportation because they have to have community experience. So now it's up to Dr. Castro what he plans to do with the proceed of the golf tournament. So you can ask him. <laughs> That's about it for me. Okay, Dr. Castro. What can okay, you well, uh, first of all, um, the USDMAAM stands for University of Santa Tomas Medical Association, Alumni Association on the Midwest. This was established as a charity organization 
1977, the first president was Dr. Andy Batuyan. And from that time on, uh, the organization would raise funds to help primarily the patients of our uh, clinical division of the University of Santo Tomas Hospital. So uh, this golf charity is one of our fundraising efforts, uh, once again, to raise money for these patients that are usually indigent that use our charity hospital. This time, Dr. Mangaba has chosen um, Highland Woods Golf Course in Hoffman Estates. And it's a uh, first time I've been here and it's so pretty and I'm, I'm happy that we picked this place. So we are in need of golfers and sponsors for some of the holes. We have contests, uh, a hole-in-one contest where the winner would win at least $5,000 and some other prizes. We have hole closest to the pin contest. We have longest drive for men and women tees, and we have longest putt contest. Uh, of course, we're here uh, to enjoy the day, play some golf, and at the same time, raise funds. And this is on August 7th, and we would like uh, golfers to get in touch with Dr. Mangabat and also myself and the other co-chair, <clears throat> Dr. Nelkar Gendronab. Um, they will find our names on the websites of USD or PMAC. All right. Okay. So far, wh when is this uh, upcoming tournament again? Um, what's the date? August 7th. August 7th. Oh, coming up soon. And yeah. So far, how many sponsors have you um, have you had? We've had uh, whole sponsors, about a dozen, and we have sponsors for the contest, uh, the hole in one contest, as you already know, the longest drive uh, needs to be filled. The closest to the pin already has a sponsor, so we need at least two more contest sponsors. Plus some players, golfers, male or female. I think uh, there is a uh, uh, corporate sponsor that you mentioned. You wrote to me, yeah. Mimi Dix and Edward Jones. And there's more sponsors, but we still need at least two more old sponsors. Uh, the request of Donation is about two hundred dollars for a corporate sponsor, and uh, for uh, individual, it's fifty dollars. So you need um, a couple more sponsors at this point in time. Yes, and some golfers as well. All right, very good. Um, so uh, it can be a good appeal for them to, to come and help out. And so far, at this point in time, uh, how many how many participating players do we have? We're looking to fill in a reservation of forty golfers, and we need at least four more. So we have until August seventh to fill in. So we appreciate. Veronica, if you spread the word around and uh, see if we can get some more golfers to join us and also some sponsors. It's a beautiful course. Like I said, it's the first time I'm seeing this. It's, it's in uh, Hoffman Estates and it's, the layout is spectacular. Okay, very good. And so far, we have talked about the sponsorship and the uh, uh, players that will be participating. Okay, and 
where the <clears throat> where this fundraising uh, will go. Uh, some of the reception the recipients that Dr. Castro has mentioned. And, and what else, Dr. Castro, Dr. Mangubat? Uh, what else do you want to mention in this interview okay. about the golf tournament? Hi. Can you hear? Hi, hi. Um, she said if there's anything else. Yeah. Uh, well, um, it's, uh, it's just a uh, be together, promote camaraderie among ourselves. Uh, you don't have to be the best golfer in town. <laughs> you just come and play. Just for fun. And, uh, it's a challenging, challenging uh, uh, game. You know, you challenge yourself because it's very hard. There are so many factors that come into play when you play golf. <laughs> your grip, your posture, you know, all those things. And then every part of your body has to be synchronized. And, you know, so but it's a fun game. Uh, and uh, it's too bad that there was a time when we have to stop it because of the pandemic. But now it's back back in action with Dr. Castro. He is the guy behind all this. So, hooray to him. He is the guy. Yes, golf Golf is a very... Thank you in advance, Veronica. Yes, Dr. Castro. Mike, can we you... appreciate what you're doing. And uh, we, we really want to thank you and your group uh, for spreading the word around to help our cause, which is to raise funds for the indigent patients of UST. Thank you, thank you so much. And I also want to announce that the, the Voyage Times and CPR TV are one of, well, the two of the sponsors in, of this event. Yes. Okay. And uh, well, for sure, it will be a, a lot of fun, and it will be a successful fundraising yes. for sure. For so. sure. Okay. And All right. You guys, Dr. Manguba, Dr. Yes. Castro, thank you so much for gracing our show today. And oh, thank you. Thank you. I know that after the show, you guys will be uh, playing um, nine holes. Yes. Of, uh, how many holes? Yes. Eight and hold. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish. Okay. I wish you good luck and have a pleasant day today. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. fun in the Philippines. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show. Today, I have a very exciting, interesting personality, a Filipino-American, and she's a lawyer, and uh, she's running for judge in DuPage County of Illinois. And help me welcome Miss Hope Fatima Mercado. Hi, Hope. How are you? Hi, Veronica. Thank you for having me. Kumusta sa inyo lahat? 
All right, como esta? And uh, and I invited you here today because um, the, just like what I said in my intro, you're running. You you're a lawyer right now, and you are running for the uh, for judge. DuPage County uh, Judicial Court in the Third Sub Circuit. So it's an right. open. There's okay. a vacancy here in DuPage County, so that's where I'm vying for November election. So this coming oh. November is the not only the presidential election; it's also a local election here in DuPage County. Okay, great. Oh, well, DuPage County. Okay, I live in Cook County here in Illinois, and. She is talking about the Page County, which is another <laughs> county here in Illinois, right? Well, yeah. I used to live in Cook County, Veronica. We used to live in Cook County. Great place to live. But now I'm in DuPage County. I love it here. And and I have to promote DuPage because I'm running for DuPage Court. But yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, it's an honor to, to be talking with you because I've heard so much great things. And Veronica, you are indeed a trailblazer. I've heard it from so many people. And thank you for, for being there for the Filipino community. We need more people like you in Cook County. Well, and thank you. Thank you, Hope. It's also my honor to have you here today. Thank and you. I've heard so much about you, too. And I'm really happy that uh, we were able to connect. Okay. Now, as... Um, Regarding regarding to your candidacy as judge, okay. So, uh, why why are you running for this position? That is a good question because uh, a lot of you know uh, Filipino Americans and all over, if, even my colleagues in Cook County and DuPage County, they ask me, "Hope, why are you running?" I mean, you know, it's pretty, it's daunting, it's you know, it's 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 challenging in a sense but why i'm running primarily veronica i have to be honest especially here in dupage county we need representation we need representation on the bench right now um obviously we don't have asian american in dupage court uh let alone filipino american in dupage court um so there's lack of diversity right and that's where i come in Representation is really important because, because you, you know, to, to, to have that equality or, or, or to achieve equality under the law, Veronica, you need equal representation from all communities. So right now, we don't have that in DuPage. Cook County, I think we have uh, several Filipino-American judges, Asian-American judges, uh, uh, African-American and Hispanic. In DuPage, it's a different story. We don't have that. So if I'm elected, I'll be, if I'm elected, I, I need the support of, of all Filipino American communities and, and all communities here in DuPage. If I'm elected, you know, I'll be the first Filipino American in DuPage court. I'll be the first Asian American woman in DuPage court. So there's the stake is high. And I'm working hard every day just to spread the word to everyone all the residents in DuPage County. So that's primarily the number one reason that I'm um, running. But secondly, obviously, I want the court to be fair. I want judicial independence. Um, I don't want the court to be deciding cases based on politics, based on outside influence, based on you know um, special interests or anything like that. I want the court to just decide based on the court of the rule of law. Most importantly, the rule of law, and and also competence. And you know, I've been in I've been a litigation attorney for over 20 years, Veronica. I've handled so many cases. I've handled diverse cases. And I've represented people and individuals, families from different walks of life, from different backgrounds. So I have that diversity of not only in, you know, my background, but diversity of practice, diversity of my legal uh uh experience in the law. So that's what I bring into the uh, DuPage court. Um all of that and plus um, a lot more. So that's what I offer. Okay, very good. As you've said, um, you're the first um, Asian American to be running in this position in DuPage County. So, so you're opening the door for Asian Americans with what you're doing. Absolutely, 
Absolutely. And it's time. It's long due here in DuPage County. And like I said, we have few Filipino American judges in DuPage, I mean, in, in Cook County, but zero in DuPage. And not a single Asian American woman in DuPage. Um, so it, it is, I'm I'm up for the challenge. And I, you know, it's it's when I started running back in Sept um, September, late September, they told me, people told me here in DuPage, even my, you know, the party that I'm running from and um, and other people, candidates, elected officials, they told me it's too late. Hope it's too late. Your opponents have campaigned two years prior, so it's too late. And, you know, that didn't deter me. I persevered. I moved forward. And my husband was a key factor in, in helping me get on the ballot, friends and family. Without them, I wouldn't be here talking to you about my campaign. So that's a key. Family support, friends and colleagues who truly believe that I can do it. And I know I can do it, Veronica. Personally, what are your chances, you think? I have a very good chance. Why I say that is because of this. Um, I appeal, I can relate to people. You know, I came from a background where, you know, um, I came from a big family, a large family, immigrant family. And I'm the seventh child. Of, of, so I have, I have nine siblings, five brothers, four sisters, came from a really large family. My mother, uh, was a teacher for 45 years and my dad was a small business owner for 50 I'm years from yeah. the Philippines oh, oh my, my dad's from Batangas so that's north Batangas, Philippine I mean uh, Tagalog right Tagalog and my mom so my mom listen my mom is from the south from Mindanao oh. so north and south right and then they met in Manila so I came from a humble background Came from a large family, I'm Filipino American. I my my, my uh, I came from a very devout Catholic family, um, so I was raised in a Catholic conservative values, and that's what I bring in. Um, and I ref I, I want to reflect, I, or I want the court to reflect our community too, because here in DuPage, although we have a lot of um, substantial population of uh, Filipino American. Um, not all of them are engaged in civic. So I'm trying to educate our community to be involved, not only in social events, functions, parties, or picnic, get involved, be active in the, in, 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 in civics, um, vote, register, and, and, and participate in the legal process, right? And political process. That is important because you cannot have a voice without participating. And that's what I think the Filipino American communities are lacking, not just in DuPage, but I think in Cook County too, Veronica. Correct. Is there a big number of uh, Asian population in DuPage? There is. We have, I, I, I attended a few, uh, actually, actually several since I started campaigning. We have Taiwanese American, we have Korean American, we have uh, Indian South South uh, Southeast um, or South Asian, the Indian population here, and um, of course the Filipino American population. I'm a member of, currently a member of the uh, Filipino American Association of the South DuPage. Um, and, yes, facade. They call it facade. <laughs> and and obviously I've been invited uh, a few and a few events of uh, for the Filipino American uh, seniors. Of DuPage, so so I very very engaged and involved in our communities here, but also I'm trying to reach out to other Asian communities. So my chances are pretty is pretty good. L let me tell you why, because why? although yeah. I'm running, oh let me let me go back. Last primary was so last primary election in March. I got the most votes of all judicial candidates for DuPage, Veronica. I am so blessed. I, I thought hard work and you know prayers work. I got the most votes of all judicial candidates for DuPage court. So that was my you know, sort of sale pitch to people. Hey, I got the most votes. It's name recognition. 
I, I went door to door during the camp, during the uh, primary uh, season. And it's, I know it's, 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 they told me you have to work hard. You have to get yourself out there. I did that. I went church to church, train station, door to door. My husband and I, and, and a few volunteers, they helped me spread the word, spread my name. So before the primary, that's exactly what it did. And guess what? It worked. Name recognition worked. And, and the fact that I'm reaching out to the community, not just my community, Asian American community, all communities of DuPage, they now know me. So my chances is I'm using the data from the primary and also the fact that even though I'm running as a Republican candidate here in DuPage, being a minority woman, I, I think I'm confident that I may be able to reach out to the swing vote voters, independent voters, and Democrat voters. Great, terrific. How big is the um, DuPage population of Asians? Well, you know, I, based on the pre, so so the the total registered voters, the last data I'm using the last data, the the, the latest data for for the entire registered voters in DuPage, there is about approximately six hundred seventy thousand. I know it's not 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 a lot. That's registered voters, and for my sub circuit. It's very limited, very narrow uh, population. We're talking about only 91,000, 91,000 in my sub-circuit. That means the voters, potential voters in my sub-circuit. But the totality of voters in DuPage, less than 700,000. It's not a lot. Uh, maybe in population-wise, maybe more than that, but the registered voters are only less than 700,000. Asian American voters comprise of, unfortunately, 10% approximately 10% of that. And if they're growing, uh, some of them may not be registered. So maybe the, the data is off because some of them are not registered. If you mobilize them and have them register before the election, I think I can get more votes out of the Asian American population. And that's, and that's my uh, agenda, to mobilize the Asian American communities along with Filipino American communities to win. I plan to win in November, Veronica. I plan to win in November. All right. Very good. Well, Miss Hope, um, Fatima Mercado, um, living, uh, you know, living with your name like that, I hope that you are hopeful. <laughs> you know, you know, people tell me, uh, uh, I've heard people say, oh, that's your name. I thought that's a slogan. Well, I'm using that as a slogan, but it's actually, I tell people, that's my name. So, you know, you 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 have to vote hope in November. So that's I mean, you it, it is. I'm taking I'm, I'm I'm using I'm using that um as a you know as a campaign hope right and 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 it's I'm fortunate to have that name and it it's sometimes it's 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 a pretty challenging to live up to that name. But I'm 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 trying every single day uh to live up to that name because my mom will be so disappointed if I don't. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, are you a member of the uh, Filipino American uh, Lawyers Association? I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, because they're they 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 have my back. They're support they're supporting me. I currently serve on the board of the Filipino American Lawyers Association of Chicago. Um, I hope they can change it to Illinois. So I've been I've been with FALA, um, uh, the acronym for Filipino American Lawyers Association. I've been with FALA for I I believe over five years now. Um, and a colleague of mine, Janice Dantas, kudos to Janice. Uh, she's the one who actually, you know, um, um, uh, you know, highly recommended or, or, or encouraged me to participate and get more involved within the legal community of uh, Filipino lawyers in, 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 in Illinois. So that was, that was pretty interesting because, you know, um, we need to have the support of the legal community too, not just our own community, but the legal community. They have to vet you, they have to support you, they have to recommend you, they have to endorse you. So so I'm glad that they're they're behind, um, they're supporting me, that, that I have their unwavering support and I'm really proud to be a member and be on the board. Terrific. Okay, before we sign off, I want you to talk to our viewing audience. So um, we there might be some, um, DuPage County residents who are watching us now. 
okay to vote for you. Okay. Thank, thank you for that. So, mga uh, kababayan, if you live in DuPage County, if you reside in Downers Grove, Woodridge, Westmont, Oak Brook, Darien, and a portion of Naperville, I need your support. Please help me be your candidate and be and, and elect me for DuPage Court uh, Third Subcircuit. I will be humbled and honored to have your unwavering support. If you want to know more about me, please visit my website at electhopeforjudge.com. And, and if you want to uh, know more about me, you can call me, send me an email, or just you know um, uh, reach out to Veronica. She has my information. Thank you, Veronica, for this opportunity. And God bless you all. Yay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Hope. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Veronica. This is uh, great. This is great. And I, I wish you good luck. And, thank you. Uh, and also, don't hesitate to give us a call if you need some help for, for some more broadcasts. So, absolutely. Or, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I just want to plug my 4th of July parade in Downers Grove, in downtown Downers Grove. I have my own line up there, Elect Hope for DuPage Court. Um, it's going to start at 1 o'clock. The, the the parade start up at 1 o'clock in, in, in Downers Grove. So I want to plug that in. And Veronica, I have a I have a next fundraising event in August 21 in Downers Grove. I'll be I'll be honored to have you uh, um, to have you there in my next event in Downers Grove. All right, great. Would love to be there if I could make it. I'll um, send you an email. I'll send you an email. <laughs> I'll send you an email reminder. Thank you, Veronica, right. again. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Hope. Hope Fatima Mercado, um, a Filipino American lawyer living in DuPage County, and she's running for a judge. Don't forget her name and her face, of course. She will be appearing in the show more, most of all, if she wins the election. <laughs> of you course, hopeful, right? <laughs> I, I will, I will. That's the, that's the plan. Right. Win in November. Okay. Maraming, maraming salamat. Uh, Likewise. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica, for this opportunity. This is a prayer and a reminder. All we have is now. Anak, umuwi ka na. Worldwide this morning, growing concern over a growing health crisis. The World Health Organization has just declared that this is a pandemic. Hi. I can't hug you. Don't touch me. <laughs> Over the last several days, we have seen peaceful demonstrations. Protests over police brutality continued here in Austin. Remember when you started going to college? You came home a liberal? Dad, please. That's what we do to you guys in this point. All these people that we never met and never will meet because of what had happened to them. It's just too much. The way that our family communicates is not necessarily, um, it's not great. What advice would you give for those of us that are struggling? Live with it. I think the norm for our community has been to just stay silent and like keep to your own business. I could definitely be doing more than I'm doing right now, and I know that others can as well. What if someone is called from God to be an activist? I can answer that question. <laughs> Shouting revolution, oh, wow, breaking each tradition. You don't believe in the Black Lives Matter movement? An advocacy group reporting at least 3,800 anti-Asian hate incidents since last March. I'm kind of conflicted. I'm like, maybe I should move home and be here with them. I hope that this moment makes you take a step forward and a step together in the right direction. In order for a subject to not be taboo in our community, there always has to be like someone to start that conversation. Yeah. You speak up for me when I can't speak up for myself. And I've seen you do that for other people. 
I see a lot of people who just kind of cut off friends and family, and I don't think I can do that. I love my parents. This is a symbol of our voices. If you look at your neighbors around you, you will see who stands with you, who stands for you. At least I know that you can stand up. That's the thing I'm so happy about. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months, and uh, we have a layaway system which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo! Good afternoon, this is Bridget Carino Quatcher bringing you this week's local news from our community. U.S. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle resigned Tuesday after the agency came under harsh scrutiny for its failure to stop a would-be assassin from wounding former President Donald Trump during a campaign rally, she announced. I take full responsibility for the security lapse, Cheadle said in an email to staff obtained by the Associated Press. In light of recent events, it is with a heavy heart that I have made the difficult decision to step down as your director. President Joe Biden released a statement Tuesday thanking Cheadle for her nearly three decades in the Secret Service and said she had selflessly dedicated and risked her life to protect our nation throughout her career. Cheadle faced bipartisan condemnation when she appeared before the House of Representatives Oversight Committee on Monday, declining to answer questions from frustrated lawmakers about the security plan for the rally and how law enforcement responded to the suspicious behavior of the gunmen. Her resignation came less than 24 hours later. A woman's 18 karat yellow gold Rolex Oyster watch, Mike Singletary and Troy Eichmann football cards, uncut sheets of American currency, and scores of collectible coins, bills and bars of precious metals are just some of the 250 unclaimed property lots on display for the public to preview on Thursday before next month's live action in the Illinois State Fair. We are excited to host the unclaimed property auction at the 2024 State Fair. It provides people with an excellent opportunity to bid on some amazing one-of-a-kind items, State Treasurer Michael Freerich said. Treasurer Michael Freerich will serve as a guest auctioneer for some of these top items at the start of the live auction, which begins 11 a.m. Saturday, August 17th at the Lincoln Stage on the Illinois State Fairgrounds, 801 East Sangamon Avenue, Springfield. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources reminds residents that although sightings of black bears in the state are rare, the potential exists that animals from neighboring states may be observed in Illinois over the next few months. With established populations in the adjacent states of Missouri and Wisconsin, occasional summer movements by bears into Illinois are anticipated, including recent confirmed sightings in Saline, Pope, Williamson and Jackson counties. It's uncertain at this time if it's the same bear or multiple bears. IDNR biologists are monitoring the bear's movement and appreciate receiving ongoing reports from the public of its whereabouts, said IDNR Wildlife Chief Mike Weffer. We're also grateful to everyone who has followed our advice and leave the bear alone and enjoy the rare privilege of observing it from a safe distance. The popularity of residential pools has increased over recent years, raising the risk for accidental drownings, meaning homeowners and parents need to be extra vigilant to protect kids who have access to the water. Public pools are a popular summer destination for people to beat the heat, but they can pose some hidden dangers. Anywhere there is water, there is a risk of drowning, said Illinois State Fire Marshal James A. Rivera. It's important for parents and owners of pools to ensure all safety measures are in place to help prevent a tragedy from occurring. Stay off your phone and know where your children are at all times if you are in or around the pool. 
Over 4,500 people died due to drowning each year from 2020 to 2022 in the United States, 500 more per year compared to 2019, according to Centers for Disease Control. That is an average of 12 fatal drownings per day. With the city of Chicago ranking as one of the most stressful places to live in the country, in a new Wallet Hub survey, Illinois State Rep Chris Miller says there's a good reason why so many area residents feel the malaise that they do. J.B. Pritzker has destroyed safety and security in the city, Miller told the Center Square. Overall, researchers compare data across 39 different metrics, including average weekly work hours to unemployment rate to divorce and suicide rates, with each of them being graded on a 100-point scale. I mean, every cost and every quality of life issue has gotten worse under the Biden-Pritzker regime, Miller added. The cost of food, the cost of electricity, the cost of gas is doubled. These things are driving businesses out of the city, driving families out of the city, and making it almost impossible for them to exist. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. fun in the Philippines.